I let loose in the club and kissed this famous ex-star. When I got back home, my husband was gone. Hi there, my name is Tanya, and I am a 40-year-old woman who is trying to figure out why my husband of 15 years decided to leave me and get this he left with my three kids just like that. I mean, sure, I may or may not have done something wrong, but in my defense, I was drunk and just wanted to relieve myself of all the stress that came with having a family with kids. How was I supposed to know that I would end up doing what I did that night and then get back to an empty house? I mean, this man literally took my kids with him. Can you imagine? Okay. Okay. I know I'm talking a lot and you guys can't really understand what I'm saying, but I'm just so angry I could kick a cow. Let me give you guys a little info about myself and my husband of 15 years who decided that he would rather leave with my kids than stay and talk to me about what had happened that night. I mean, who does he think he is? I know that if I should dig deep into his past, I probably would have found something that would have been probably worse than what I did that night, but you don't see me acting out. Sorry guys, I started rambling. Again, now before I start, I need you guys to go through everything carefully and tell me if he had any right to take my kids or if I am the one at fault here. Like I said earlier, my name is Tanya. Tanya Gibbons, not my real last name though. And I was born to an African-American mom and a Caucasian dad. I have two elder brothers, three younger sisters, and we all lived in Florida. Now, I'm not going to bore you with my education and family upbringing because, let's be honest, you guys only care about why I've been rambling since this post started and, well, I don't even want you guys to know that part about me. Everything was going well and peaceful till I graduated from college, and my mother decided that it would be best for me if I left the house and started fending for myself. In her words, she said, my mother threw me out when I was done with school, and that was when I met your father, so I don't see why I should continue to feed and house you any longer. Now, I know that may sound harsh to some of you, but my mother was only looking out for me. She wanted me to grow up to be a successful and independent lady who could hold her home together. Yeah, I did the complete opposite of what she wanted. I left my parents' house and moved to New York, the city of dreams. Yeah, I know it's cliche, but then that was the place I wanted to live. At first, I had to sleep on benches and in front of stores, but soon I was able to find a roommate and I immediately moved in with her. Now, I'm not going to mention her name for obvious reasons, so I'll just call her Sade. Sade was the best roommate I had ever had. Well, if I'm not counting my siblings, she's the only roommate I ever had. She was always smiling, had this infectious personality, and was a foodie. I mention this because she loved trying out new recipes every week. While I stayed with Sade, I went on several job interviews, but they all gave me that we'll get back to you quote and I always contemplated giving up and just going back home. But Saad always encouraged me to never give up, and one day I finally learned a job to a big magazine company. FYI, I studied journalism in school. So, yeah. I was so excited to that I told Sade that I wanted to go to the club that night and celebrate. Now, before I carry on, it's important for guys to remember that I'm extremely lightheaded, and therefore I don't do well with alcohol. But I was ready to throw caution to the wind and just have fun. The night was amazing and after my second round of shots, I couldn't stand or even see straight. I don't know what happened later, but I do know that I found myself in my bed the next morning with a migraine. Luckily, I didn't have to report to work till Monday, and it was the weekend, so I had time to take care of the migraine, get cloths for work, and get ready to slay the magazine world. Ah, yes, I thought I had it all and would destroy the competition with all that I knew and had learned about working in a magazine company, but I was wrong. I mean, the first week was amazing. I made friends, learned a lot from my team leader, and even wrote my first piece that was published in the magazine. I mean, they published it in the back, but hey, a win is a win. But soon I was made to understand that I only got that special treatment because I was still a newbie, and it was time for me to sit up and get to work. I was always buried in documents that I had to proofread, examine, analyze, or even make a summary about, and it was exhausting. I started coming home late and was hardly getting any sleep. Sadie was worried about me, but what could she do? This carried on for an extra year till I worked up the courage to quit my job. Well, I didn't actually quit on my own. I was offered another job with a better working environment, and that was, was where I met Brett. Meeting Brett was normal to me, mainly because he was a colleague at that time, and I didn't think he would be more than that. I never saw Brett as the type of guy I would end up with. Neither did I see him as the guy who would leave the house with my kids at one in the morning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You see, I'm still trying to figure out what I did wrong. Like, what did I do, though? It was only a mistake. A small mistake that was somehow seen by people, but then again, who hasn't messed up once or twice in their lives? Who? You see, we all have made mistakes, but apparently my sin seems to be the greatest of all sins. I mean, come on. 
Anyway, like I was saying, I met Brett at my new job, and to be honest, I hated him the moment I was introduced to him as my colleague. Call me petty or whatever you may like, but I just felt he tried to hard to please the boss. Well, he didn't actually. I just didn't understand him then, and I immediately jumped into that conclusion. The first three weeks of my new job was amazing, but my petty self kept picking at what Brett did and always complained about it to Sadie. Sadie always listened to me complain and bicker about how Brett always appeared to be a prefect little angel, but I knew he was not, and I was right. I mean, I still get over the fact that this man left me, like me, me Tanya. He left me over something so silly and ridiculous. Okay, maybe it's not ridiculous, but for crying out loud, he shouldn't have taken my kids with him. My babies. I mean, what the hell is all that about? Sadie would always say that the reason I noticed Brett and all the things he did was because I secretly had a crush on him. I always laughed and told her that she was being delusional. To cut the story short, I'm pretty sure you don't want to hear how Brett became my knight in shinning armor, and I got hit by Cupid that I started developing feelings for him. It took two years of working with Brett before started developing feelings for him, and after dating for an extra two years, he asked me to marry him. And I obviously said yes. If I didn't, then there wouldn't be a story to tell now, would there? Brett and I still worked together for some things after we got married. But knowing how hectic our jobs were, he suggested that I resign when we discovered that we were expecting, and I agreed. To be honest, I didn't really think much about it, and actually planned to return to the workspace after my child turned three. But life in Brett's third leg had other plans for me. I discovered I was pregnant after Jordan, my first child, turned three and Brett was over the moon. Mostly because he had always wanted a daughter. He loved Jordan very much, but you guys know how a man is with his daughters, right? I told Brett that no matter what the gender of the baby was, I was gonna start working after the child turned four and he agreed. You know, I should have just suggested family planning after my second child was born, but I wanted to give my husband the benefit of the doubt and trust that he would control his urges, or at least have a stronger pullout game, but boy was I disappointed. After I gave birth to Jasmine, yeah, we actually got a girl this time. Brett got a promotion, and that night we had a little too much fun, which resulted to the birth of King, my third and last boy. This time around, I literally dragged Brett to the family planning clinic, and we both underwent a procedure that guaranteed that there won't be any surprises. No matter how hard we tried, perfect, or not. You see, after King was born, I was already 40 and well. Let's say that drive I had after I had Jordan to return to work was no longer there. And now I had another stressful job that seemed to be draining me. Being a mom. Ladies, and even gents, don't get me wrong, being a mom is a beautiful thing and a blessing if I'm being honest, but to me, it was work. You know, I planned to get back to work after having Jordan and that was gonna help me get back to the whole mother bear kind of thing. Like I'm this kind of person that unless I have something motivating me to like work and all, I turn lazy and well grumpy. After I had Jordan, I still had three hyperdrive in me because I still had that going back to work vibe in me, and I was always hyperactive and all. Even after I had Jasmine, it was still the same, but the moment I had King, well, it died. It was like I was immediately hit with a midlife crisis. Again, don't get me wrong, I love my guys and I still do. If you want to know and see if I still have that strength to fight, try touching one of my babies. I will send you to meet Hades before you blink an eye. Why I said it felt like I was hit with this wave of irritation and well laziness. It was so bad that I literally let myself go. Like I put on pounds, stopped going out, stopped being cautious of what I wore. But do you know the worst part? Brett still found me attractive enough to want to do it. Okay, so it's not a bad thing, but come on now. I mean, that little encouragement to hit the gym or you know look good wouldn't kill him, but he never said anything. It always annoyed life out of me. Now that you have a clue about me and my marriage to Brett, Let's go to what had been my breaking point. That day I was in the kitchen feeding King his breakfast when the doorbell rung. I dropped the spoon on the counter and went to open the door. Now imagine my absolute supri and delight to see my old college friends. Now these people were the reason I actually had a social life while I was in school back then. And to be honest, I've really missed them. My friends Lisa, Jessica, and Star all gave me a really tight and bone-crushing hugs the moment they came in. Hey Tanya, how have you been? Lisa asked me, but this wasn't your typical question, and she didn't want the normal I'm fine answer because I could tell from the way she looked at me from my messy hair to my stained shirt down to my toenails that she expected a long and detailed reply. Girls, grab a seat while I make you guys some margaritas. We have a lot to talk about, I say while going back into kitchen to pick up King and prepare some margaritas. I was able to get King to take his nap before I laid him in his room. 
I was really thankful because I did not know how I was going to carry him around while I was with my friends. Now I had finished making Thai drinks and served them to my friends before I told them everything. And I mean, everything. Including the part where I was tired of being a full-time and wish I could just take a break. Now it's important to note that these ladies had never had a steady relationship with any guy, and me telling them that I needed to let loose was like me taking the ring off a grenade and holding it, like I was waiting for it to explode, but how was I supposed to know? I loved my girls and I was only being honest with them. I now know that it was a big mistake. Brett, if you're reading this, I hope you got the part about all of it being a big mistake because when I went to meet your mama and ask about my babies, she had a lot to say to me, but I ignored her because I was only interested in getting my babies back. Brett, Brett, bring back my kids. Come, back and give me my kids. Okay, back to the story. Now Star was the youngest of the three and also the craziest one in the group. The moment she finished listening to my story, she said that all I needed was a proper girl's night out. No husband, no kids, just me, them, booze and liquor. I smiled at that and told her that I couldn't do it because I was now a married woman and my kids were my responsibility. She just laughed and told me, you'll come around soon. After that, we talked all about the adventures we had in college and soon it was time for them to leave. So they bade me farewell and left, but not before each of them had saved their contacts in my phone. When Brett came home from work that day, I told him about their visit and also their suggestion. Guess what he told me? He said that they were right and that I needed some time off from all the hustle and bustle of the house. When I tried to object, did you guys see the keyword, object? Brett again, if you're reading this, then you would remember that night that we first talked about this. I told you that I didn't feel okay, but did you? Listen to me, you did not. He suggested that I go out on Friday night while he stayed home with the kids, and if I don't like it, then I don't have to do it again. You see, I was not in support of it initially, but somehow because I got a little carried away. I am the one being punished. Like, what the heck? That Friday night, I went out with the girls and I actually had fun, but I still thought about my kids from time to time. We danced and laughed and well drank, but not too much. It was really fun, and I told Brett about everything. Now, for context... Brett doesn't know that I am lightheaded and since he's not much of a drinker. He never found out all the while we dated so when he suggested I try it again, I should have known that something was going to go wrong and I mean horribly wrong. That day started off like any other day with the stress of housework. I had informed my girls that we would be heading out later that night and they said that they had a surprise for me. I couldn't understand what they meant or even guess it so I just left the topic. After Brett got home that night I dressed up and left to meet my girls. Now they had picked an exclusive club that had a literal bouncer at the door. Now to get into that place, you either had to be someone really famous or have some connections with the owners if the club. And let's be honest, I had none of them, but Star had some connections, so she had gotten our names on the guest list. Now I would be lying if I said that I did not enjoy myself because I did. I really had fun. And for the first time, I didn't think about the house, the kids, or Brett. I really wanted to let loose tonight and just have the time of my life. Now the night had been going smoothly and well. In all my excitement, I had done several shots. Not one, not two, not three, several. And drank a lot of margaritas. And I completely lost control of what I said and did. My friends were no better because no one tried to stop me or hold me back. I can't even remember the number of people that I had danced with that night. It really was getting intense, but the next thing I did really took the crown of the most stupid thing I had ever done before. You even as I sit here and type this, I still blame Brett for letting me go out that night. I mean, why couldn't he tell me that I needed to take care of my family? Like sure you would say that he was being a supportive and wonderful husband, blah, 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 blah. What else is new? That still did not make what he did to me okay. Now here is where things got ugly. Remember I said that this was an exclusive club and all that? Yeah, so this club had rooms that were given to special guests to do their private business. Now I did not know about this and to be fair, I wasn't in full control of myself that night, so I did not think my next move through. After I had danced with the sixth or tenth guy that night, I needed to lie down somewhere, so I stumbled to where the rooms were located. Don't ask me how I found them. Heck, even I don't know how I managed to get there. There were a lot of rooms there, but the first four I tried were locked. I was almost giving up when the door of the fifth room clicked open and I heard a guy's voice. Now there's something else I forgot to mention. When I get Shastrisk T-faced, my sex drive increases and that night was no exception. Like I said, I opened the door and walked in like I owned the place. The room was spacious but had red lights on. There was a single bed and a chair there along with a table. I then saw a guy sitting there looking at me like I just came from another planet. And well, to be fair, 
I was inside his room. Who are you and what do to want? He asked me in this low and raspy voice that made my drunk insides tingle. I didn't answer him. I just walked up to him and sat down opposite him. I stared at him for a while before smiling and saying, you're so pretty, can I have you? Don't ask me how I knew exactly what I said. I guess I can tell you, but not yet. The guy looked at me for a while, looked behind him and then smiled as he turned back to me. Sure, I'm sure they'll love this, he said to me. Now I didn't quite understand what he meant, but then again I was drunk, so... Yeah. After hearing his words of confirmation, I slowly got up, still staggering and trying to find balance. I made my way to him and kissed him. It was a long but sloppy kiss that he seemed to be enjoying. Yuck. Knowing what I know now, I can't say I'm surprised anymore. If only I stopped at the kiss. But oh no. Drunk Tanya was a beast when she was awoken. I took control of everything and the guy just let me take control. I don't know how long it was, but when my friends eventually found me, I had climaxed. Twice, and the guy, according to what Star told me, looked so spent they could swear he was dead, but he wasn't. Thank goodness. After all that, we took an Uber home because none of us was in the right frame to drive. I got home around 3 in the morning and the house was quiet. I ended up sleeping on the couch because I couldn't reach the bedroom. The next day, I woke up with the worst hangover no to mankind, but Brett made something for me to drink and by the end of the day, I was feeling better. At night, Brett asked me how my night was and I told him that it was all a blur, which wasn't a lie because I couldn't remember anything about that night and he simply said, okay, that snake, that wolf in sheep's clothing couldn't even look me in the face and confront me. Can you imagine? I went to bed around 12.47 a.m. that night and I was awoken by a car driving off a few minutes later. I checked the clock and it was 1 a.m. I called out for Brett, but he didn't answer. Thinking he was in the kids' room, I went back to bed. Early the next day, I went into the kids' room to start my motherly roles, but the room was empty. I called Brett, but I was sent to voicemail. I did not panic or anything, but when the day was almost over and I did not see them, it get a call back. That's when I started to worry. While I was still trying to figure things out, Sadie calls me and starts shouting at me, asking me how I could have been so stupid and whatnot. I asked her what she was talking about and she just hung up the phone. A few minutes later, Lisa texts me a link and asked me to click on it. When I did, my jaw dropped. It was a video of me with a popular P asterisk R star doing everything. I mean everything to him. Turns out he was in the middle of a live stream and I just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Now I start freaking out and go over to Brett's family house, but his mom won't let me in. She just stood there calling me names. I did not have time for her nonsense. I just wanted my kids, but she said she would rather die than return my kids to me. Brett, I know you're reading this. Bring me my babies back. Everyone makes mistakes, so I don't know why you're behaving like a kid. Brett Matthew Jones, bring me my babies and let's both sit down like mature people and talk this out. Now you guys see why I'm upset. Why would he take my kids from me? I'm still at home waiting for him to return my babies. What do you think? Is he right or wrong? 